Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, special service of a farewell for the, the Kushals as we ask God's blessings uh, upon them and, and their move and their uh, future ministry and God's blessings upon uh, the congregations here that uh, Pastor has so faithfully served over the years as well. I hope you received, I'm Pastor Peter Salsley by the way, uh, serve at St. John in Redwood Falls and uh, privileged due to the move, privileged to now serve as the circuit pastor uh, here in the area. And uh, so uh, here to uh, serve you with God's word today too. So uh, hopefully you received a, a sheet as you came in. And as you see, uh, we'll begin with the choir number. Uh, of course, we always begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Choir will sing, Go Now in Peace.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how many? As you anticipate your move over the last couple months, you've probably had the opportunity to think back, not just as a family, but as, as congregations uh, that the, the Kushals are privileged to serve. And, and you, you might, might have had the thought in thinking back how many. So we'll, we'll start easy. How many years? 15. 15 years. And how fast did that go? Bam, like that. So, how many years? 15, 15 years of, of uh, blessed uh, ministry to God's people here. Uh, how many children? <laughs> Still got them all? Are you taking them all? Good. Okay, taking them all. And uh, all of them had while you were, were here and have raised here as well. I think we know how many congregations, where you started, where you, where you are, are now, and how many congregations you're going to. But then you get into the little more, more difficult. How many, how many shut-in visits? How many church services? How many, how many sermons did you, did you preach? How many... How many people did you visit in the jail? How many Bible studies? How many nursing home services? How many, how many marriages? Maybe you'd remember that one. I don't know. But baptisms? Bringing little children through the water and the word into God's family? How many people did you comfort at funerals? Giving them the message of Christ crucified and risen for them? and their loved one who is with Jesus. And you, you go over those things in your mind and you just, the, the, it's, it's just boggling, mind-boggling to think about all of that. And then you start to think how many more. Um, there's probably already, uh, you know, always one more. They're, they're on your heart, they're on your mind, God's people. Um, and, and if you weren't able to be right in front of them at the time, at the moment, they're always, they're always in a pastor's heart and in a pastor's prayers, more importantly, to Jesus. And I'm sure that you will be in pastor's prayers uh, in the future as well. And there's, there's that sense of loss as you move on, but not a sense of failure because you didn't get a chance to do this, or you didn't get a chance to do that, God placed you here among these people to serve at this time for the time that he has given you with the duty and the task that he gives all of his under shepherds, and that is to preach the gospel and to administer the sacraments for the time that God is able to, to give you. And that time, here is is ending and so in a way yes it is it is uh, bittersweet because you remember all of those all of those good and wonderful things and and uh, yet it is has that bitter bitter taste because you know that's ending here but take heart because the ministry that is carried on in our churches does not depend on any pastor. Nor should we put our trust in any, any pastor, but we put the trust in the message that the pastor preaches, and that is in Jesus Christ, our Savior, as the foundation of the church. When I, when I think of, of these momentous times, whether it's the transitions in ministry, or it's, it's anniversaries, or uh, whatever it might be in a congregation, and as you take these steps forward in a, a congregation's life, I kind of think of the, the church as, as this big museum. 
And, and you walk in, and it says up on the top door, it's uh, top of the door, it says the Holy Christian Church. And you, you walk in, and, and you see this huge statue of Jesus right at the middle in the center. He's the foundation and the heart of the church. And then all around, you see, you see these, these little, little rooms, and they have all the names of, of all these different churches that are within the Holy Christian Church. And you can walk in, each and every one, whether, whether it is uh, the, the, the church in Danube or in, in Renville or or over in Wisconsin where you're going and you can see you can see as you walk in uh, all of the the pastors that have served there and then there's and then there's a list in pictures of, of all of those who were were baptized that we can't possibly even keep in our in our memory and and but God knows them and then you look at all of the pictures of those who have who have finished their lives uh, in, in faith and they now rest from their labors. And then you might see the, some of the building projects that have happened and the programs that have, have been uh, uh, recorded in the annals of history, even if they're not recorded on paper, God knows and God has blessed. And, and you look around in that museum of the Holy Christian Church and you just stand in awe of what God has done. And as pastors, we often think, in spite of us, uh, who are we? Who are we to to even uh, preach the gospel? Because we are we are unworthy sinners just as much as you. But every single picture on the wall of every every church, it's just loaded with sinners. But sinner saints who have been redeemed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And as you as you look, no matter where God chooses for you to go and, and serve. And no matter where God leads you as, as members of these congregations, there is a place in the museum of God's history that has your name on it and in it too. And God chooses how and when and where to bless with the proclamation of his gospel message as the word is preached and will be, whether it's by vacancy pastors in, the, in these congregations uh, or as a pastor, uh, only God knows who that is, is, is uh, led to accept a call to serve God's people here uh, or, or at the church that you're called to. Because the, the church isn't about me as a pastor, but it's not about me as any one of us uh, either. It's about Christ and what he's done for the church. And so I thought that as you think about that and as you walk through the, 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 the museum in your mind of what God has done to bless, to bless you, to bless these congregations through the preaching of the word, I thought of the Apostle Paul as he, as he wrote back to the Ephesians, and uh, uh, he, he certainly had a heart for the people, every letter that, uh, almost every letter that he writes, he, he says, I, I pray for you and I thank God for you. And, and that's what he did for the Ephesians. They had this special place in his heart, just like you people will in, in the heart of the, the Kushels. And, and the Apostle Paul wanted really it boiled down to one thing. And it wasn't, it wasn't even that, that he could see them again, although he would love to, and, and Lord willing, Lord willing the, the paths cross again. But if they don't, you know that, that they will in heaven. And you'll be together uh, in heaven with these people that, that you have served with the gospel. But, but Paul didn't know that, and we don't know that either. So he didn't pray that, that uh, you know, the only thing is I hope we, I get to see you again and rely and trust on these personal relationships and connections that we have. But instead, this is what the Apostle Paul prayed for. And I, I think this would be pastor's prayer for you. He prays, I pray that out of his glorious riches... He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp 
How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's a long sermon if I went through all of that. But when you boil it down, what does your pastor want for you? That you would be filled with the knowledge of Christ and remain faithful to the Lord who has called you out of the darkness of sin into His light. And that you, would be, that, that you would be rooted, that you would be rooted and established in love, the love of Christ, together with all God's holy people. You see, it's one museum. It's not all separate. But it's one holy Christian church so that you can grasp, and it's just even hard for us to imagine, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, the love of Christ, to know this love that surpasses knowledge, so you're filled with the measure of the fullness of God. Because when it really comes down to it, as parents, what do we want for our children? We want a lot of great things for our children, but we want to see them in heaven. As grandparents, we want to see our grandchildren in heaven. As church members, you want to see the person sitting next to you and the person in the next congregation over. You want them to see them all in heaven. And, and as a pastor, you want to see all of God's people in heaven. And you trust that through the preaching of the gospel, God is going to do what he promises to do. He's going to answer this prayer of the Apostle Paul and the prayer of your, your pastor. And not only that, but as God often does, he, he does even greater and better than we could even ask or imagine. And that's why the Apostle Paul ends with this doxology. He says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. How many? How many thank yous have you heard? I, you probably don't know. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you for your faithful service in our, in our circuit to our St. John uh, school and the things that you did to serve there. And thank you certainly uh, from, from God's people but let's remember the doxology. The doxology of praise that the Apostle Paul gives here because he says, thank God. Thank and praise the Lord. And so more than anything, we thank God for his faithful servants. Thank God, the Lord of the church, to him be glory. Give glory to him, trust in him. Give glory and praise and honor in the church forever and ever to him. You see, as you, as you stand in this museum of the Holy Christian Church, it's not just all about history. But there is, there is the future church section that we can only glance or gaze into just for a, for a little bit, and, and we, we, don't, we don't even know. But what we do know is that the gospel will be preached here, Renville, Flora, Redwood, in Wisconsin, the gospel will be preached. And because the gospel is preached, souls will be won for Christ, and we can be thankful. And as you probably experienced a number of times in your ministry, you probably thought, 
man, I didn't think it was going to go this way. But this is way better than I thought. Or God did something so, so just amazing that it just blew you away. But that, isn't that what God promises here? To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So thank God. Thank God for you. Thank God. Thank God for all of the blessings that he gives to his church. And thank God that you can look forward and just know that that future church has so many blessings, it's just more than, immeasurably more than, than all we ask or imagine, no matter where you serve and how you serve and where the Lord takes you, and not just as pastors, but as a church and as a congregation. And trust that. Trust that God is going to do what he promises to do through his word. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And we continue on the, the page you received, the farewell rite. Dear brothers and sisters, as you know, Pastor Michael Kushel has accepted a call to a new field of service in Christ Church. Today we bid him and his family farewell and Godspeed. And we look to the word of our Lord for comfort, peace, and guidance. Pastor Kushel. We believe that the call you received and have accepted is indeed the voice of your Lord calling you through his people to another field of service. As the risen Lord Jesus guided his first apostles to minister in various places, so also you, after seeking the counsel of your fellow Christians and praying for the Lord's guidance, are now leaving to serve in another part of Christ's kingdom. As you go, may the Holy Spirit continue to give you love for God and his people so that you faithfully administer God's grace in its various forms for building up the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus manages his kingdom in the interest of the gospel so that many may be saved. In love, he sent Pastor Kushel to serve among us for a time, and through his ministry, we have been richly blessed. As we prayed for, supported, and encouraged him while he was among us, may we do the same when God, according to his gracious will, sends another pastor to serve these congregations. The Bible encourages all Christians, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. May we continue to devote ourselves to the faithful use of God's word and sacraments and to all the tasks we have ta taken on to nourish one another and reach out to the lost. May the Lord bless us and keep us in his care. And let us pray. O Lord God, merciful and gracious Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us through the ministry of your servant, Pastor Mike Kushel. Pour out your grace on him in his new field of service and grant him patience, understanding, zeal, and faithfulness. Support and strengthen him and his family so that through the gospel your holy church may grow and prosper. Bless our congregations and continue to protect, enrich, and guide us through your word so that we may live lives worthy of the calling we have received. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. Amen. And we pray the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And dear brother, may the Lord keep you from all harm and watch over your life. May the Lord watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Amen. And we sing the closing hymn, Go My Children With My Blessing, hymn 332.
That concludes our uh, service here. Uh, there is a light lunch to. A meal to make for everybody. So please stay. And there, on the right hand side, when you go down, there is a um, Bible that the churches have purchased for official with um, some uh, note cards there. And if you care to write them a, a note or leave a Bible passage, um, please do that. So, and there are also um, some thank yous from the Kushos um, at the same area. So, so make sure you catch that on the right hand side of the church page. Thank you. And uh, understanding that uh, uh, the congregations here haven't gone through a, a vacancy, uh, thankfully, for quite a while, I just wanted to, to make a, a note. Um, in this, this month's uh, Forward in Christ magazine, there's a... Uh, an article that I'd really encourage you to, to read called The Lord Calls. And while a vacancy may be difficult, the Lord will bless a congregation through it. And uh, I think that would uh, help God's people as you, as you uh, look to uh, the, the vacancy here and, and uh, even the blessings that uh, God is going to bring from that. I just want to read a, a little bit of a section here. The Lord blesses his people in many ways during a vacancy. And near the top of that list is the useful reminder that the Lord is more important than the servants he provides. Pastors and teachers come and go. They take with them their personalities and talents, but they do not take away the Lord's word and sacraments. By those means of grace, the Lord remains with his people and continues to care for them. He forgives their sins. He strengthens their faith. He empowers them for lives of service. And while we may treasure the individual the Lord uses to bring us his word and sacraments, the real power comes from the Spirit working through that servant. What Christians need is not one particular pastor or teacher whom they have grown to love, but a servant of the Lord who will bring them the Savior's word. This is not to say that God's people should stop treasuring the Lord's servants, but the Lord is more important than any individual servant that he may send. So we know that the Lord is in control of sending those servants, whether it be uh, here or, or uh, anywhere, and we are thankful for that, that time that we have uh, those faithful servants. And so I'd encourage you to, to take a look at that, and, and uh, uh, it's a good time to, to gather together in unity and to move forward in unity as, as well as a church and as a congregation, too. And so... We bid you farewell until we see you again. Lord willing, before heaven. I got to get to a Brewer game with you anyway. But uh, so God's blessings. Um, we'll let uh, uh, the Kushals uh, leave first, and then they can greet you. Or should we have them first in line? What's the What's the tradition here? Usher them out. Okay. So we'll have, we'll have the, the kushals go down, go down first. But uh, uh, since we are, are going to uh, uh, eat, why don't we ask the Lord's blessing with a common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever.